Hey guys, this is Andrew with HKN, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the optimal receiver, and we're at the last part of this uh, little series here. Uh, the next video is just going to be an example, putting all of this together. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about making a decision on what signal was sent finally. So uh, again, all of these videos assume you've watched the previous videos, and are going to assume the information that uh, I gave in the previous one is known. So in the previous video, I showed that the expectation of the random vector, that uh, the random component of our received vector is zero, and the random, uh, the expectation of uh, a to i, a to j conjugate um, is n zero over two delta i minus j, which means that the no that the uh, the variance or the power of the noise of, of each component of the noise in this vector is equal to the noise is equal to the uh, the power of the original noise, and also uh, all of these uh, random variables inside this vector are independent, uh, which was not obvious from uh, the formulation. So if we go back to what our decision maker was, we were using the maximum likelihood um, philosophy. And what the maximum likelihood philosophy says that the decider, which we're going to call S, um, S of T, the S hat of T that we decide is being sent. We're going to retry that. Um, S hat of T was going to equal to the arg max over M of the probability of getting the received signal given that the nth signal was sent, which basically meant that uh, we wanted to pick the signal that gave us the best chance of getting what we did. Um, and we assumed that all signals were sent equally likely beforehand in order to get for, to the maximum likelihood from the maximum a posteriori. Uh, now that we know that we can express our r in terms of a vector, uh, we can change this because we know we can express our signal in terms of a vector. So the signal vector we're going to choose on uh, is the argmax over m of the probability of the receiver vector given the nth signal sent vector. Um, and so we can expand this more. So this is the same as the argmax over m of the probability of the signal vector being sent. So we don't know which one it is, so we'll call it k um, uh, plus the noise vector given that the mth, mth vector was sent. And because we know that the, uh, that this is Gaussian, the noise, uh, we can actually write this probability now. So this probability is the argmax over m, and it's bec and because each one of the components of this are independent, it's the probability of all of them multiplied together. So we're going to use the pi notation. So it's the multiplication from n equals 1 up to capital N of some constant out front that's going to be a normalizer um, times the expected value of minus 1 over n, 0, because the variance is n0 over 2, which is going to get a 2 in the bottom, according to a Gaussian PDF, of R n, so the nth element in R, minus the nth element of the supposed sent signal SM squared, and we're done there. Uh, and what's nice about uh, Gaussians is that uh, this product can also be written in terms of a vector, um, and we can get rid of this pi and end up with argmax over m of c exp negative 1 over n0 
And then in here, we're going to get the difference of the two vectors, which is r minus sm squared. Um, because if you look at, uh, because all of these are independent, this ends up working out nicely. This is a con this transition from here to here is a consequence of the independence property. Um, at this point, we're going to ignore the constant c because it doesn't matter for optimization and take the logarithm of our objective function. So this is the object, that thing that we're trying to optimize. Um, and because the natural logarithm increases with larger values and decreases with larger values, taking the natural log of this will not change the value SM that optimizes, that uh, minimizes this equation or maximizes it. Um, so basically what I'm saying is I can take the ln and maximize it and it won't change the answer. So we're going to continue up here now uh, and we're going to say that s hat is equal to the argmax um, the argmax over m of if I take if I ignore c and then take the logarithm um, I end up with negative r vector minus the mth m vector squared, uh, mth signal vector squared over n0. Um, and I end up with a summation over all of the values, all of the subvalues of this. So specifically, um, I can write this as. So it's a summation over all of the subvalues. So s hat is going to equal to argmax over m of the negative summation from n equals 1 to cap n of um, r sub n minus s sub m n squared over n0. And at this point, we have another constant here, right? n0. And we don't care about constants. Like we did down here, we don't care about c. So um, I apologize for being off the screen here. This is r minus sm squared. Um, it's basically this written in vector form. Um, so what we end up with here uh, is we end up with s hat equals argmax over m of, we ignore the n0 and we just get the negative summation over all projected values. Um, I had a little bit of a notation change here. I changed the capital K that I was using in previous problems to a capital N. I hope that didn't confuse everybody. This is, capital N is just the number of basis vectors. It's the number of phi's. Um, and we have here R sub N minus S sub M N squared. Uh, the negative out front is a little bit annoying, but we know that we can... Uh, if we maximize the negative of something, it's the same as minimizing the positive version. So we can instead do arg min over m of the summation of n equals 1 up to capital N of rn minus smn squared. And if we look at this equation now, this should look fairly familiar. This is the difference in value between each of the components of two vectors squared added together. I should kind of remind you of the Euclidean distance formula, which is exactly this. Um, in the Euclidean distance formula, however, we take a square root, but if we instead square it, we end up with argmin over m of the magnitude of the difference between our receiver vector 
and the supposedly sent nth vector, uh, this would have the square root on this, so instead we just square it. So what we find is that um, we can also get rid of the square because maximizing something is the same as maximizing the square of it. So this is essentially the same, uh, but we use both the squared and unsquared versions, so I'll leave both up and box both in. Um, we're at the end here, um, and this is a key result. This is our final decision maker. It basically says that the vector whose endpoint is closest to the endpoint of the receiver vector, uh, the, the signals vector whose endpoint is closest to the endpoint of the receiver vector is the one we sent and closest in actually the Euclidean sense. In the sense that if you graph these two vectors, the one whose endpoints are physically closest together is the one we decide that was sent. And so this is called the minimum distance for MD receiver. This is a hugely important conclusion that we find that the, the, the signal whose vector in our signal space minimizes the distance between said vector and the vector in, of the receiver in, this, in the same signal space is the one we decide was sent. And that just makes so much sense. Like we said, we wanted to pick the, the signal that was closest to our received signal. And closest ha had some funny definitions, but if we use discretized signals in an orthonormal basis, what we find is that we just find the vectors that are closest together. The vector that is closest to our received sig vector is the one we decide is sent, and that should just make so much sense. Um, and basically, this is the ending for our making this simpler. We cannot make this any simpler. So our chain is that we go from maximum a posteriori, uh, and if everything is equiprobable, write that as EP, then we get to a maximum likelihood receiver. And if we have additive white Gaussian noise and a orthonormal basis function, we can get to a minimum distance receiver. This is the evolution. This is so important. This is our optimal receiver. These are the rules for deciding on what is the best decision to make on what was sent, given our alphabet of size capital N or capital K if you were watching previous videos. Um, so now, if we're so inclined, we can graph all of our signal vectors. Say we put signal, we have a signal one whose vector ends there, uh, signal two whose vector ends here, signal three whose vector ends here, and signal four whose vector ends here. We can now say, if we are so inclined, we can graph regions where if the receiver vector lands in these regions, we know which signal was sent because they're closest to any one of these. And the way you do that is you connect all of these together. These are not the decision regions, but they help form them. And I'll write the decision regions in pink. What you do is you take these lines, they're straight lines just connecting, um, and you bisect them. Uh, that was terribly drawn. Let's see if we can redraw that. What you do is you bisect all of these green lines. So, over axes. So this is assuming two basis functions. So I haven't drawn this before, so I guess I'll, I'll make this more explicit. This is the projection onto the phi 2, and this is the projection onto phi 1 of t. Um, there is an endpoint here. Um, 
So what you do is you bisect these lines. So this is going to be something like this. This is going to be something like this. This is going to be something like this. And this is going to be something like this. And you extend them until they intersect. And then wherever they intersect, you stop. So these are, this is a fairly silly drawing, but we can now erase the green lines because those actually have no meaning. They were just to help us. Um, and if you erase them, take me a half second here to erase a little bit. So if we erase these lines and keep our red ones or our pink ones, here, and of course keep our blue lines here with all of our vector points. What we say is that any receiver vector that falls in this region below these two yellow lines gets sent to S4. Any receiver vector uh, that, gets, that falls in this region gets sent to S3. Any receiver vector that falls in this region gets sent to S1. And any vector that falls in this region gets sent to S2. And we call these decision regions. Basically, if our, our vector, say, ends up here, we will just instantly decide that it is S1 because it's in the region for S1. And we denote that by a capital omega sub 1. Decision region for S2 is capital omega sub 2. S3 is capital omega sub 3. And S4 is capital omega sub 4. And those define the regions that you will take R, that you will decide S, is, S was sent based on if R falls into them. Um, and so that's a way to draw those. This is a visual representation of signal space. So this is signal space because you can say it looks a lot like R2, uh, but the axes are not X and Y, they're phi 1 and phi 2. So that's why it's called signal space because the basis are signals. Um, and this is a visual representation. You plot your signals as points. You plot your received vector as, let's say, an X. And you plot your decision regions as different shaded regions that will take R to those points. So basically, this is the grouping of points that are closest to S1, closest to S2, S3, and S4. Um, you can also call them, uh, I write them as omegas. You can also call them H's. And in fact, if you look at the accompanying document, they will also be written as H's. Um, so that's it. That tells us what our receiver is. Our, receive, our total process here is to take our received vector, uh, knowing what our basis set is and our signal set is, we take our received vector and project it onto the basis set. We project it onto each phi. Once we have that, we take the uh, R vector and we plot it into signal space. And we look at the distance, the Euclidean distance or even the Euclidean distance squared between the received vector and each one of the possible sent vectors. The, one, the possible sent vector that minimizes the distance between itself and R is the one that we decide was sent. If we want to plot that, we plot this in the, into the space just like it was R2 or R3 or R4, whatever dimension your, vec, your, uh, your phi's get to. In this case, I drew it with uh, two basis vectors where this is phi1 and this is phi2. 
Um, I didn't write that here, but I can write it as phi 2 of t. Um, and you plot your s's as I, I use dots. You plot your receiver point as x. And the perpendicular bisectors to the lines that connect all of your signals define decision regions. And a decision region is the grouping of the set of all points such that R will map to the point, map to said uh, signal. So R will go to S1 if it's within this space, R will go to S2 if it's in this, S3 if it's in here, S4 if it's in here. Um, this is so important, this is the basis of all of uh, digital communications. This is called the optimal coherent receiver. Coherent meaning you know the phase of your signal. There's no phase shift going on, uh, unknown phase shift going on. If that goes on, you can get some other stuff going, uh, other parts to it, but that's out of the scope of what we're discussing right now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this lecture series. Um, there will be an example video uh, up as well that will walk you through an example of starting at symbols, putting them into signal space, finding the basis factors, and then eventually when you get a received signal, it will we'll get to uh, decoding and drawing uh, a signal, uh, signal space diagram with decision regions. Uh, that'll happen next time, though. I'm done with the video for now. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I uh, hope you learned something. Have a nice day, everybody.